Before we actually start doing some coding, I just want to say a little bit about um, how it works. So first of all, remember that there are four steps to the um, problem solving method that we're using. Orient, plan, execute, and test. Coding is actually the third step, execute. So you, you should have done your orient step, which is requirements in our situation, and your plan step, which is preparing the specification before you get to the coding step, the execute step. Now you're going to do that by creating um, a requirements and specification document. And I've given you an example document. Uh, it's posted on the site so you can see exactly what's needed. It has a flow chart. It has some tests, um, those kind of things. Once you start actually writing your code, um, you're going to run into something called bugs. Now, what a bug is just an error in your program. And um, people are sometimes surprised when they first start programming how easy it is to get bugs. Almost everybody ends up with bugs, even very seasoned programmers. So um, don't, don't let this discourage you. Uh, you just have to go through the process of finding and eliminating the errors, and this is called debugging. Now there are three types of errors that you typically come across when you're programming. The first one is what we call a syntax error. And in a syntax error, that just means that there's something wrong with the actual format of the program. Um, in a sense, it's ungrammatical. It's not written in a way that conforms to the uh, definition of how the statements in your programming language need to be. Now, in our VBA editor, the editor will recognize when something like that has happened, and it turns the line red. And you cannot run your program until you've eliminated, eliminated all those kinds of errors. Um, it also suggests ways to fix the problem. A lot of times those suggestions are very much to the point and tell you exactly what's wrong. Sometimes they're not. It's doing its best to figure it out, but in some cases it just doesn't get it right. So bear with it and you're sometimes just going to have to look and figure it out. Now the second type of error, once you've eliminated the syntax errors and started to run your program, is what's called a runtime error. And a runtime error makes your program crash uh, while it's running. Now a well-written program shouldn't do that. Um, unfortunately, our program's going to uh, be a little susceptible to this kind of thing until we learn how to deal with, uh, let's say, weird input that the user puts in or something like that. Um, so we'll talk about that later. But you, you should recognize that having runtime errors is kind of amateurish. Although, plenty of software that's out there comes with the possibility of getting a runtime error if you do something unusual. And I'm sure you've all had the experience of having your program suddenly quit or freeze up. And a lot of times, um, there's an option given to inform the company that created the program if something like that happens. And in general, unless you know it was something silly you did that made it happen, you should let them know because this will help them figure out how to make their program better in the future and avoid those runtime errors. Ideally, the program should recover gracefully and give you another chance to do whatever it was correctly. Okay, now the third kind of error is what's called a logic error. And these are very insidious because it looks like the program is running just fine. And the only way you ever know there was an error is if you have some test cases that you prepared in advance so you can compare the answer you were supposed to get with the answer your, programming, your program is giving. And this is why tests are critical, so that you can detect these logic errors. Okay, now, if you do have logic errors, a lot of times um, it may be a little bit difficult to pin down where it is. And this is one reason why when we're coding, we're going to write a small piece of the code run that, make sure it works, then another small piece, instead of writing the whole thing at once. And that works much better. But we also have a really nice feature in Visual Basic that lets you um, go through your program step by step and see what the values of all the variables are and so forth. 
Now what I've done here, I've got the uh, real estate program open. What I want to do now is show you how you can step through the code. And let's go over to the developer tab and take a look at the code. So open up Visual Basic. And you can see I have a workbook open procedure here that sets up the headings for um, the columns on my worksheet. And here they are. So as soon as I open the workbook, those got created. And now what my program does is create one entry, one row in the worksheet that contains these quantities. And let's come back over here. And what I'm going to do is use this debug, this here, all right, F8. See that? Step into F8. Now I want to match it. I'll pick it here. Um, somehow. Let's try pushing this. Okay, something went wrong. Let's, let's go here and then push F8. Okay. So now um, what I'm going to do is continue pushing F8 and going through the process of the program. So here we go. Now what it does is it highlights with yellow the line that's about to execute. So I'm about to execute this line. And right now this variable called agent, which is a string, is empty. So now I'm going to push the F8 key again. And here's my input box asking me to enter the name of the agent. Well, this is a real estate agent, so I'll put the name of a good agent I know. Vina Foster. Okay. And now I'm back in the program. And if I now hover my mouse over this variable agent, you can see that the value has been set to the string. That's what the quotes mean, the Vina Boster. Okay, now I'm ready to execute this next line which you see is, continues on to two lines here. And um, so I'm going to push F8 again. And here we are. I'll enter my neighborhood and push OK. And you can see that um, neighborhood now has a value, Oralhurst. OK, sale amount not set yet because I haven't actually executed this line. Let's go ahead and push F8 again. And now I'll enter the amount of this sale. Let's say it's 200,000. And make sure I got enough zeros there. Yep. Okay. So now the sale amount is set. And now I'm about to calculate the commission. So I'll push F8 again. And now you can see that the commission has been calculated. Now, if I had a mistake and it was doing it wrong, then I would be able to identify, oh, okay, this is the line where my mistake is, and fix it. All right, and now I'm just going to quickly push the F8 key to go through these lines where it's just filling in the values of the cells. This does the auto fit, adjusting the width of the columns to fit my entries. And finally, I end the subroutine. And if I come back over to the spreadsheet, you can see here it is with all the values filled in. Okay, oh, um, let's just, yeah. So that was stepping through. If you found a, found a bug somehow or you had a runtime error or whatever and you want to uh, go back and start over, just go into Visual Basic and under Run, you can do Reset. Uh, and that typically will let it start over from the beginning if it's hung up on something. Okay, now when you're stepping through your code, Visual Basic is doing something called interpreting your program, and that means it's reading each line, it's keeping track of the names of the variables, it's showing, it's able to show you the values, and so on. Uh, normally, when you actually run your program, it runs, it does what's called compiling it. So instead of doing it line by line the way it does when we're stepping through, uh, what it does is it creates a, a version in the basic code that runs on the machine instead of using the strings of characters that make up the program, similar to an exe file. And an exe file is um, a file where the code has been translated into machine form. It's not human readable anymore, but it runs very fast. 
and typically that's what your program will run once you've finished debugging it and created your application. Now, programming requires a lot of attention to detail, and this is something that a lot of people have a problem with. They don't like attending to detail. Well, sorry, for the purposes of this class, you're going to have to do that. Your program won't run until every single syntax error is fixed. Once it's actually running, you still need to do your tests and, and track down the bugs. Uh, there's help available. There's the uh, bulletin boards, the, the discussion groups in D2L, and there's teaching assistance. So take advantage of the resources that we have to help you do your debugging if you get stuck. Good luck and have fun.